It's uh, 5.33 yeah. and uh, I will be starting webinar live. So everyone who joins, everyone who's in, will be recording this from this point forward. It'll be available, I believe they make them all available uh, Friday afternoon on the town website. So Ellen and Julian are here, so we'll have a um, quorum. Hey, Ellen. And Britt. Hello. How are things? <laughs> They're OK, thanks. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks, you too. Hi, Britt. Hi, Julian. I should turn more lights. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so we're missing Sarah and Shoshana. One of them said they couldn't make it. Sarah said she couldn't make it. I thought Shoshana said that too, but I'm not positive about that. Let me see if I can find it. Sarah can't make it. And I think Shoshana said that she was going to be on the road. That sounds right. Okay. So I guess we're it. Um, Bennett, are you going to do the minutes? Yes. Or, um, yeah. Okay. Now. Um, and uh, can somebody else share the screen? I guess I don't have to make you. Does anyone else have the um, agenda? I can find it and share it if you want. Yeah. So uh, Alan would have to make you a co-chair or co-whatever it's called, co-host. That way I'll keep uh, track of the participants. We all set you. Who did we lose here? Brit. Still around. Okay. Oh, I'm here. I'm just getting my husband's out of town. I'm just getting everybody dinner. So I'm just going to turn my screen off okay. for a second. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone. Um, we're on, we can start the meeting. Oh, we're waiting for Julian to call up the agenda. Why don't we do hours while we're waiting? Uh, Ellen? Um, gosh, um, probably just one. Well, the meeting is an hour and a half plus we, right, met. <laughs> yeah. we met since the last meeting, I think. Yep, that's what I was counting. So what? I was counting that. Oh, okay. So three? Sure. Okay. Uh, Bennett? Uh, three and a half. We don't do halves, four. Uh, Julian? Uh, probably like four or five. Call it five. Okay. Me, I don't think I did that much this uh, month. I'll say seven. Uh, all right. And we'll have to find out from Sarah and Shoshana and Britt when you come back on or just yeah I'm probably at um probably at three okay a right, slow start but that's how it normally is in the year so all right let's see if anybody else is waiting to come in no can you all see the agenda it pulls up strangely on my computer I can yes. see it Hi. kind of backwards in a weird way I'm going to shrink it. Yeah, it's backwards in a way. It's funny, but it works. That's okay. Uh, it has the wrong date, so that's all right. It doesn't matter. We know what it is. Um, all right. Call to order. Uh, we did ours. Any announcements? No announcements? Okay. No public comments, obviously. Um, the minutes from December.
Yeah, everyone approved them, Ellen, Julian? I wasn't at that meeting, so. Okay, um, Britt? Yes. Okay, um, so we need, a, we have a quorum, I guess there's four of us that were there, so all right, the minutes are approved. Okay, uh, committee reports. Uh, I don't have much to report. Um, we really need to be thinking about um, April and planning our um, where our work days are going to be. And um, we're going to do the sustainability festival again. So it'd be good to uh, make sure we've somebody should probably mute there. Uh, we should figure out uh, yeah, what we're going to have on the table and make sure we have all the signs and all the other stuff we need and trees. We can talk about that as an agenda item. Um, and then the other thing is, um, you know, I've, I've always liked each person on the committee to have a project that they're working on and uh, stuff that they bring to the meeting rather than me always saying, all right, this is what's here. So um, I think some of us are working on some projects, but let's think about that more and try to get more, more stuff going. I think there's a lot of unfinished projects, like the um, Sarah has been working on the uh, large tree, um, whatever it's called. Uh, brain is not working. Uh, anyway, significant tree ordinance. Significant tree ordinance. Thank you. Good. Okay, and other projects. Big tree stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, and for me, it's the state stuff that I started working on, and then don't continue working on. So anyway, let's think about working on projects and getting more stuff done off of the, uh, the to-do list. And um, oh, the only other thing I have, uh, I heard from someone who wants some trees, had some trees taken down, a guy named David Rudderman on Greenwich Street. Did I talk about this last month or to you, Alan? 64 Greenwich Street. So I, he wrote to the, uh, the tree committee email and, um, he apparently wrote in December and nobody responded. So he wrote again. So uh, I want to tell him something. I mean, we don't really have trees to plant for people, but um, I don't really want to say that. I'd rather that we figure out a way that we can plant trees. So I want to bring that up as a agenda item, I guess, or as a brainstorm. Um, we could plant in the general neighborhood and include in front of that property. That's true. Uh, is Greenwich Street a possibility, Alan? You're muted. I'm uh, pulling it up right now. What's that? I'm trying to pull it up on my map, my inventory program. Uh, keep yeah. talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, otherwise we could use committee funds and do our own plantings kind of thing. We don't even have to include Alan. Uh, we don't have a truck, we don't have water, but we could make the, the homeowners do the watering. So that's not an issue. Uh, we could get some buckets of wood chips. We could find a tree. Um, there's some trees that we have that we got for free and then we could buy a tree perhaps. So what do people think? Do we have a sense of, I mean, I don't know that neighborhood I feel like we should prioritize funds for folks who cannot reasonably purchase trees themselves. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Although I kind of like supporting people who ask for trees. It's like, you know, they're more likely to take care of the trees too. So, um. yeah, I mean, I think that's a point too, right? If you're thinking about like collective uh community level ecosystem services <laughs> um yeah yeah i would more push for just including it on our planting list for next year we need more locations to plant and i think that's a good neighborhood that we've worked in before so where is greenwich street i'm looking it up right now <laughs> Greenwich Thank Street you. is near Longmeadow and Glendale, where we planted on Meat Court. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, I think, one street over south from Longmeadow. Okay. So, all right, why don't uh, we look into on. that as a possible planting location for this year? Alan, can you do that? Yes. Great. 
Uh, if that doesn't work, then we'll get back to him with something else. But uh, but think about that, you know, how we can do plantings for people that ask for trees and or how we can do plantings for, you know, one, you know, low income homeowner say, you know, I don't know this guy could be or not, I don't know, but or not even a homeowner renters. Um, we'd have to work with the landlord a little bit, but maybe I, there's maybe this public uh, right away in front of their homes or I don't know. I think what we could do is like have a form where like uh, folks like fill out a Google form and say, I'd like a tree and then we can prioritize sort of who lives in uh, more minority communities and uh, we could go around and even say like, hey, listen, can you afford a tree? If not, we'll try to help. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to just go plant a tree anytime someone asks for it, uh, especially if they want to pay for the tree, but. Hmm. How many requests do we get for, you know, I feel like when I first joined this committee, um, I, I could be making this up, but I feel like Alan, you received, you would periodically receive requests from homeowners and just had just because of um, uh, resourcing and capacity and cost and that kind of stuff, we're kind of in a, the unfortunate position of just having to say no all the time. Do, is this, I mean, I haven't heard anything about a request in quite in a, in a while. Um, is this like the one that we'll get for six months probably, or do we get them once a week or like, cause what I don't want to do, like, I totally agree with your instincts to like, somebody wants a tree, let's figure out a way to plant a tree. Uh, you know what I, what I, I, would, I don't want to get in a position where, you know, 20 people ask and we have to be like, well, we said yes to this person. We said no to that person. And, you know, suddenly it's a different type of dynamic. Mm -hmm. But it may not be, you know, like we may rarely get requests these days. Yeah, so I get requests, you know, barely, regularly, mostly in the spring and, you know, summertime or maybe in the fall, you know, not, you know, it's, I don't know, probably maybe 20 or so requests might come in to me directly. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, without, without the funding to purchase trees, um, you know, I usually just tell folks that we'll um, try to get to them at some point in the, in the uh, planting season. Um, so when usually yep. what, I, what I did last year was when the shade tree committee was doing a tree planting, I would order trees um, during the tree planting. Um, and then we would plant trees on the Saturday. Some, Frequently, they happen to be in the area where people requested trees, which was uh, very helpful. Uh, and then a couple of times it, I purchased the trees and then I planted them, you know, with my crew, you know, the week or so later or, or before, depending upon when I picked up the trees. So they, they've been getting planted. Um, yep. You haven't really had a lot of requests. Um, so. Well, we used to... Um... It used to be on the website, request a tree. Yeah. And especially during the 2000 tree initiative, you know, people would request and they knew we had trees and we had, so we were actively doing that. When that ran out and we were running, starting to run low on money, we removed that. And it was too much for Alan's crew to do that. So we removed it from the website. We're not offering it. So people still come to us though, occasionally. I think this is the second one I've got in the last few months. A lot of times when we take down a tree in front of somebody's house, they, I ask them, you know, would you be interested in having a tree? You know, if, especially if I had to do a setback planting, you know, uh, plant it in front of your house again. And, and I kind of get a sense of them whether they are or not. And um, so then it's a process of arranging to have the stump ground down and, you know, coordinating the purchasing and selection purchasing and planting of that tree. So um, it's still all happening. It's just happening much slower, right. slower river. Yeah. So, you know, if we step up to this, then it saves Alan's crew, it saves money and time and everything too. So um, I think we, especially when they come directly to us instead of to Alan. So, um, so maybe I'll, I'll contact him and just sound it out. Say we don't actively have the program. We don't, 
have a budget for it exactly, but we'd be happy to help you. Can you pay for the tree? That sort of thing. Yeah. So I've done that a little bit on my own. So, um, all right, I'll, I'll contact them and get back to everyone. Yeah. All right, so that's, um, that's my chair's report. Uh, Julian? Yeah, so first thing I was gonna mention was the person who requested the tree on Greenwich. Um, the second thing that I had was, it looked like there were a few emails in there like that seemed to be mostly spam, like you owe this much, blah, 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 blah. It seemed to be just spam. Should we just delete those as a general practice when I find them? Yeah, I did that today, yeah. Okay. Anything that's spam should right. go right to the spam thing, yeah. Um, oh, and then other thing I was gonna say is just the amount of people who were so uh, interested in the significant tree ordinance. I've talked to some of my neighbors over break um, and had some more time at home. So I've been able to talk with a lot of people who would be supportive of a significant tree-like ordinance. Okay. Do you have a list of names and email addresses or whatever? Uh, I don't have email addresses, but I have four names. Okay. So, you know, if we had a list of names and addresses, we could say, all right, this is going up to the town council. Can you write them or can you come to the meeting? Yeah, definitely. That's a good, good. idea. Um, Why don't you be in touch else? with Sarah about that? Okay. Yeah, I will. Sounds good. Great. That's it. Okay. Oh, the other thing I was going to say was, uh, was a lot of trees seemed to come down around town a few weeks ago, but I wasn't sure if that was, if they were public trees or private trees. I drove by uh, getting lunch at Cushman Market and I saw a big pine tree that had fallen. Um, so I was just wondering if, are these mostly public trees that are going or are they more private trees? Yeah, the, uh, that kind of windstorm we had there where it was 60 degrees and went, went down to minus 10 uh, in a matter of hours. Uh, that windstorm did blow down a significant number of large trees around town. Um, most of them were all but one, I can say, was were actually private trees that blew down into the public way. Um, there was a white pine on Station Road that had a, a large leader blown out of it across the road. Um, that was the only town tree, I think, that actually failed. Um, but once they fall on the road, we own it and we have to clean it up. So They just removed the, the other half of it today or yesterday of that tree. Wait. The one on Station Road? Yep. Huh. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> we were supposed to do that removal, so that's interesting. It was um, Northeast Tree Care or something. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Well, good to hear. Don't complain. Yeah, no. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> all righty. Um, no, I think that's all the things I have. In general, when a tree does blow down, do uh, and it's on public property, should we offer the offer new trees to those uh, residents as well? Yeah, I usually have that conversation with them. Um, not always, but most of the time. I mean, they usually okay. come out and talk and want to know what's going on, and they either ask, "Can I have another tree to place replace this one?" Or, you know, I ask them if we'd be okay or not be okay, but would you like to have a tree uh, planted and um, Occasionally, they say no. Got it. Thank you. All right, Alan, Tree Warden's report. Yeah. Um, so I guess the uh, the big thing for me, and I have a bunch of small items, but we, uh, as a member of the Mass Tree Wardens and Forest Association, we had our annual conference this week, Tuesday and Wednesday in Sturbridge. Um, we had a record number. We had 450 attendees. So these are tree wardens, people in the tree care industry, it's utility companies, it's, um, it's uh, people from committees, anybody interested in uh, public shade trees, uh, two-day conference. We had uh, 50 students. We always invite uh, agricultural programs, uh, tech schools, um, or public schools that have an arbor slash forestry program to attend. So we have 50 students also. Attend. A lot of great presentations. Uh, it's a really good, uh, really good day, two days. Um, as far as a big takeaway for me from the presentation, um, 
that the community might be interested in is that uh, uh, birch leaf disease is in Massachusetts in a big way. Uh, we did find it in Amherst uh, last month, um, but it's already spread pretty significantly. Um, it's a nematode. Uh, it's very difficult to control. It spreads very rapidly, it spreads very far. It's, they believe it's spreading on birds. Um, so the takeaway from that presentation was that we're probably going to see a pretty significant decline, if not loss of beech trees. Uh, and that's American, European, you know, fern leaf beech, you name it, um, all of them. So all of our beech trees in town, uh, we have them next to Amherst Golf Course, there's a row of beech trees, very old, mature beech trees. Um, those are already infested with it. Um, so the beech trees on the common are next. Um, there is no real treatment for it. Um, there's nothing registered to treat it yet. So you actually have to get the chemical that you're treating the nematode with. They live in the buds. They don't live in the wood or the sap or anywhere else. Um, and they do all their damage in the buds while the leaves are, you know, bud is growing and expanding. As soon as they open up, the nematodes um, pretty much have already done all their damage. Um, you have a, you have a, an egg, a nymph, and an adult all in the same, at the same time. So they're very difficult to treat. The chemicals that are used to control nematodes and other things like turf and whatnot um, are very, uh, what the refrigerator is hot. They're very dangerous chemicals and they're dangerous to work with. Um, so not good news for our beech trees in town. Emerald ash borer also is just everywhere. Um, we're going to see significant dieback of ever of um, ash trees in town. The trees on Kenwick Park are infested. Um, you know, all the trees that I look at now are pretty much already infested. So they're, they're going to be gone in a matter of, you know, years. And the white pine decline is still very active. Um, and we're losing a lot of white pine just from the multiple things going on with white pine right now. So that's... Um, the other presentation they had from uh, the nursery industry was that expect the cost of trees to go up. Uh, the industry is just, you know, overwhelmed with requests for trees and they can't grow enough of them fast enough. Um, so it's putting cost pressure on the trees. They also can't get labor. So the nursery industry on every step of it is struggling with finding people to help grow trees and get mm -hmm. them get them to harvest uh, for planting. So, you know, we're struggling to find people to work. They're struggling, everyone's struggling to find people to work. So um, the cost of trees will be, you know, continue to go up um, regardless of all the other costs that are associated with the inflation rate. Um, uh, hold, on, hold on a second, Alan. Yeah, Britt, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Alan if, um, based on the presentations, if you had a sense of what the expected time frame is for that cost increase for trees, you know, if it would be worth us considering buying more trees than usual up front mm -hmm. and trying to store them somewhere, you know, to avoid not being able to afford as many trees, mm -hmm. you know, a few months from now, or you're kind of expecting that to be longer term. So um, I think uh, the takeaway I got from that presentation and then what they actually recommended was buy smaller trees um, maybe buy bare root tree stock. Um, the price is going to be immediate. You'll see an increase this spring as soon as nobody's selling trees right now. Um, so, you know, get your orders in early. Um, just because of availability. Um, and then, uh, but the cost is, is pretty much already baked into what they're going to be harvesting this spring. Um, and they don't see any change in the labor factor. Um, or the demand uh, for the near term. So it's going to go continue to be an issue for a couple of years, unless, again, unless the economy totally tanks, um, which is what happened when we started our tree planting program back in 2011, around there, 2012. That was at the very bottom of sort of the, of, uh, I don't know, 
little recession we had in 2008. <laughs> and they were stuck with a lot of trees in their nurseries they couldn't get rid of. So I was buying, you know, a, a, a two inch caliper uh, grow bag tree for $85. That, that tree today is $185, $195 for the same tree today. Um, um, well, that, that brings that answer up, the question? That, that brings up the idea of starting our nursery again. Yeah. I would need someone, we need to find a spot. Uh, the spot that I had wasn't great and it's not really available anymore. So, you know, where could we have a nursery and we'd need someone to really take that on as a project. Mm -hmm. But it's a great idea. I mean, it was great that we did that. We grew Turkish hazelnut trees, which um, we were able to plant quite a few out, you know, maybe 12, 15 trees. And they cost us almost nothing to grow. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, our bucket truck uh, sprung a leak in the upper piston, the piston on the upper boom. Um, so it's actually been offline for um, about four weeks now. Uh, can't get a new piston until April. Uh, so we're having the one that started leaking uh, rebuilt. Um, we should have that back hopefully soon. Um, though I don't have a date for that yet. Um, we mulch the trees on the North Common. If you notice that the trees around the Mary Maple have all had very thick layer of mulch applied. Uh, that's all part of the root zone protection plan for the construction. We'll be adding more to that, expanding out more uh, in the future. But that's those are going to be all no-go areas for uh, the construction project. Um, that should start. Still need to have the stump ground. Um, the um, Henry mentioned the Sustainability Festival. I just wanna make sure the committee was aware that that's coming back. Uh, for those of you who didn't know about it, the committee participated in that um, since its beginning. Um, it's a great opportunity to really see a lot of people. Um, is that an Earth Day related event on the common? Yes. It is, it is, okay. yeah. So it's the 22nd Earth Day related. Arbor Day is the last Friday of April. So April 28th, the following Weekend is Arbor Day. Uh, we do Arbor Month usually, um, so we have a lot, of, a lot of planning to do, which we kind of can fold hopefully into um, the Heritage Tree Grant and the Sycamore Tree at the Amherst History Museum. I'm do sorry, some public um, <clears throat> Alan, do they have a date planned already for the festival, the Sustainability Festival? Yes, the, 20, the 22nd. Okay, thank you. April 22nd. So hopefully we can uh, combine Arbor Month with some something that we have to come up with for the large maple. Uh, again, I want to try to get a speaker, uh, get a venue. I need to talk to the Emerson Cinema to see if we can <clears throat> get a, access to their one of their rooms, their theaters, to have a presentation done or somewhere in town. <clears throat> um, mm. I think that's it. The three words report. Yep. Any other questions for Alan? No? All right. So we go on to the Merry Maple. Um, what's the story with getting that uh, your presentation on the town website? Okay. It should be on the town website. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it should be on the um, Actually, your the committee page. Um, we can link it to the committee page. Um, I don't think it was there. I was there today. Let me check that. Also, over. the um, <clears throat> the last shade tree meeting where I gave the the short PowerPoint presentation um, is on your committee's meeting. It's listed there. I guess we could take that and edit it down to just the just the segment of the Mary Maple, so people didn't have to to watch the whole committee. Meeting. Where would it be? Minutes. Oh, minutes. Okay, yeah. It's, okay, that's there. But um. Oh, is the link to the thing in the minutes? Yep. Ah. Okay. Okay. So. All right, I'll look for that later. So um, Julian, can you find that link and then 
share it with uh, the Facebook and uh, Instagram thing? For the article that was put out? For the, um, you know, the, pro the, the presentation that Alan did with slides and talking that uh, he did at our meeting. I can find it on the town website and put it up, yeah. Great, it, yeah. It should be on the minutes from our, on our website. Great, okay. That's great, all right, good. Um, and then the wood giveaway. So I, I have all of the, I, I took the um, information Brick gave me and went out and we cut all the wood rounds of various sizes, uh, some various lengths of wood that people wanted. Um, there's a few people that requested boards, which I can't do. And Henry, you were one of those people that requested a board. I can give you a log that you can make a board out of if you find someone to mill it. Um, I'm working with, with somebody um, to mill some of the trees or to come up with a way to make some benches out of the trees that will be in the town part of the town uh, bench inventory. Uh, yeah, well, I'm looking for something to maybe make a bench by the bus stop on Pulpit Hill Road. So if you get some boards, otherwise I'll take a slab, sure. Okay, okay thanks. So I had that and uh, I written an email briefly this, today and we just need to come up with um, a way to get it to everybody. I, I have started delivering it to people that I know and um, they requested you know, some odd pieces um, so I delivered those, um, but uh, as far as the wood rounds go that we people requested, I have a, they're all in the back of my truck, so um, <laughs> ready to go. Well, we, I mean, it's a little to be in your truck for a long time, but we could bring it to the sustainability festival and have people pick them up there. Yeah. It might be an interesting thing to attract people to our booth, or if we have unclaimed pieces, that might be a thing to do to have them there and give them out then. I'm happy. I mean, I don't, having seen the list, I don't get the sense that it's a huge volume of wood, especially if you've delivered many of the larger pieces. I'm happy to, you know, like put them in my shed or my barn and just say, hey, people can stop by between this hour and this hour on this weekend or this weekend, you know, if that's helpful. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you want to do that or I didn't know if the committee wanted to have an event that people come pick it up. And then again, who who knows if someone's available at that time of day, you know, whatever. So yeah, I'm happy to do whatever the committee wants. Um, Actually, the other idea that I had, and I just remembered this, um, you know, there is the indoor farmer's market at Had in Hadley right now. It's in the mall. Um, yeah, yeah. Set up a table there and then it gets more people to that market. And I know it's many of the same vendors that come to the Amherst market. Um, we could try that as well. I'd be happy to volunteer for a couple hours to, to do that. I don't know if that's run by the town of Hadley. I don't know who actually. It's not. That. You'd have to contact the winter market. Okay. You look up Amherst winter market and uh, or maybe they, I think it's still called that, but uh, yeah. Okay. Contact people. We could do a booth, you know, have give out our flyers and information about our events too. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that could work. Great. It's a nice market. I mean, it's little, but. Yeah. Great. All right. Anything else on the Merry Maple? I, I collected all of the, um, you know, letters to the Merry Maple uh, right before Christmas. I actually have not looked through all of them. I looked through, you know, maybe 20 or 30 of them. And there were a lot of like just kids scribbling. Um, and so I need to go through and see like what number roughly of actual memories have been shared. Um, and then maybe we can, uh, I'll send out an email and we can decide how we want to proceed um, at that point. You know, if it's like three actual stories or memories or, you know, or if it's 98% kids saying, I love you tree. And like, that's all of it. Then, you know, we might decide to do things differently based on, on those, based on that information. We could maybe have, uh, you know, a display at the Jones library, if you contacted them. Um, yeah, I think that would be great. I think yeah. I, we, I have to go through them and make sure there's enough yeah. 
substance there to to warrant that. Um, uh, let's bring that I, back I up. don't have the, I know people had also submitted memories and stories digitally, and I, I need to follow up with the um, whoever was running that to see if we can get those. Okay. Could we use any of them for social media posts or, you know, did people, when they submitted it, agree okay. that it could be shared? We didn't ask anyone for permission okay. to share, um, but it was posted on the signs that were around the tables that there would likely be some type of public display. Um, and it was a public event. So I would mm -hmm. think like from a legal perspective, it would <laughs> be a problem, but yeah. Okay. Um, I think just one thing we think about at the museum is, you know, not including a child's last name or a photo sure. of them without their permission or something like that. So sure. Yeah. And the ones that I've seen from kids so far do not have last names and do not include photos. Good. Yeah, it'd be cute. Yeah. Some of them are cute. I mean, some of them are, are, you know, heartwarming actually. Yeah. Like I love the Mary Maple and I'm, I'm sad that it has to die. And I like, just, you know, <laughs> No. But I'll go through the rest of those. And yes, I think some of them could be used for social media at the very least. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll make a few, I'll propose a few ideas based on what's there. All right. Sounds good. Uh, town tree inventory. Alan, anything? Um. Uh, we haven't done much on the tree inventory. I was hoping that the intern that worked this past summer was going to have some time during break to do it. Um, we haven't been able to connect yet, um, but hopefully you can spend uh, maybe four or five days working on it. Um, the other part of the tree inventory grant that we got was the management plan. I did start working on the management plan um, and I got a good outline together and I'm starting to plug in the various components of that. Um, so what I'd like to do is get that um, you know, a little more completed and then give it to the committee to look at and you know uh, see how you feel and what you think should be added to it. Um, I think the committee should have a good voice in it because um, uh, the committee you know will be one of those things that is continual you know long after I leave. So It'd be nice to make sure that whatever happens going forward, the committee is involved um, in the management of the town's trees. So. What's the name of that plan? The Urban Forest Management Plan. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, social media update. Julian. I don't have anything to report for that. Okay. And Shoshana is not here, so we'll move on. Uh, I posted before this meeting last night, I think. And Shoshana posted the meeting on Facebook too. So, um, In fact, that's how I found that the meeting wasn't happening Tuesday because I had sent out the agenda and uh, forgot to check to see. And then Shoshana said, I went to post it on Facebook and I couldn't find the link. I was like, oh, okay. So... Somehow my email never got through. Uh, town tree tour. Ellen, we met once and uh, anything new on that to say? Um, yeah, well, we had talked about uh, possibly doing the tree tour again um, this spring, um, maybe on Mother's Day as well, um, since we had a nice turnout last year. On that date, I was a little skeptical, but it worked out really well. Um, we, um, Henry and I talked about um, the options for sharing the information, whether uh, the information, the photographs and write-ups go into an app or a QR code, or we do a printed brochure. Um, I think it could definitely go up on the town website if we sort of get an opportunity to um, make our our town website or our site a little more interesting and accessible. Um, 
and I was going to, I'm going to do sort of a mock-up if we want to do a printed brochure. Again, um, my feeling is to go more digital just because then we're not using paper, which is killing trees. <laughs> so um, that's, I think, where, did I forget anything, Henry? Oh, one of the trees on our tour got cut down. Um, it was the sugar maple on Dickinson. Um, it was on a private uh, property. Um, so we lost a tree, sadly. That was the only sugar maple on our uh, tour, but there is one other, uh, it's not as nice, but on Dickinson, so maybe we'll do that. Um, so yeah, we did talk about the idea of an app. Um, neither Ellen nor I know anything about creating an app, but I checked with um, um, Gordon, who used to be on the committee, and uh, he didn't know anything about it either. But that's something, if anyone knows anyone who creates apps or has an idea about how to do that, um, that'd be a really great thing to have an app that, you know, we offer for free and people put it on their phone and then do the tour on their own. I think it's the easiest way to get the information out. Yeah, there are definitely students at UMass who could put something like that together, either for credit or for payment, um, which if it's an undergrad is not, you know, I don't think it would take that many hours, perhaps a few hundred dollars. Um, and I feel like there are other options too, like a, an, you know, there's a whole GIS program spanning the two departments that I'm in um, where, you know, people could make what's called an ArcGIS story map um, where you would, you could have a QR code, they would log on to it and you can kind of like walk through with these geolocated pinpoints with information about each tree and that kind of thing. Um, so if that's something we wanted to do, I could put out a, call for yeah. either an undergraduate student or a graduate student to enroll in an independent study with me and I could guide them on that and they would receive credit. Um, so. that, that's exactly what I want. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe I'll, I'll think about um, how to go about that. I guess the other thing I was going to bring up at, at some point is I had mentioned previously to the committee that I teach an environmental education class in the spring um, every year, and I'd like for there to be a community component to it. And so I, I, I think I'm, I'm decided upon having that community component focused on trees um, for this semester, which means I'll have 25 undergraduate and graduate students um, who will need to be working on some type of collaborative project, um, you know, bringing a range of skills onto the scene. And so that could, I mean, in, in looking at the agenda here, I'm thinking like, okay, well, they could probably help with the town tree tour in different ways. They could help with, you know, many of these different things. They could help with the sustainability fair event. So, you know, I'd be interested to hear from the committee, perhaps not now, but at some point, what would be the most useful thing? Would it be like a large event, um, you know, let different groups contribute in different ways, right? The key is just that it's a something where they're actively designing and participating in what could be considered um, environmental education on trees at the community scale, um, and that's obviously very open ended. So I'm I'm pretty flexible in terms of what I'm willing to have them do and what I think they would be interested in, and so maybe just hearing at some point about what you all think the the largest need would be be useful. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great opportunity. Yeah. yeah, pursue that and we'll put on the agenda for February to have a longer discussion. Okay. Good. Thanks. When, um, when do you need to have your you know, class schedule written up and uh, yeah. you know, the outline and everything? <laughs> Yeah, so the syllabus, the class will start on February 6th. I believe that's the first day of fall class, uh, sorry, spring classes. And so what I've done in past years is kind of spend the, I give them a heads up at the beginning of the semester that there'll be some kind of collaborative project on a particular theme. Um, and then we spend the first couple of weeks of the semester just kind of learning the basics about environmental education and different tools and that kind of thing. And so they don't actually get into the meat of the project until, um, 
I mean, really until late February, I guess I was going to say March, but late February is probably better. So certainly if we would decide it on, on a clearer pathway by the next meeting, I think that would be helpful. Okay. All right, good. Um, so where are we? Second Saturday plantings. Did, did people come up with uh, sites? I had one in mind and I can't remember what it is now. I did. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Let me see if I can. I have a map. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here. Not voting well. I think there's um, a, a need along Main Street. Um, a bunch of trees were taken down, I think, you know, sort of near Amherst Dental. Um, along there, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic and bus stop. Um, and you can see tree stumps, <laughs> but there are no, you know, there's a big swath of land there with no trees along the road. Yeah, Main Street is a very narrow planting area that's in the public way. So um, any tree planting we do on Main Street will be a setback planting, um, but that's okay. I'm more than happy to work with the property owners there to, to plant Okay. Trees. It's mostly rental uh, units, yeah. I think, in that area. But, you know, um, I noticed this summer, there's just like blasting sunlight into the, all the side of the apartment buildings. And um, so that was my recommendation. And there's a lot of student housing there, but there's also a lot of just like family rental units and affordable housing. So it might be a good place to target. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of, uh, you know, pedestrian and bike traffic along there too, so. True. Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. It looks more, way more formal than it actually is. <laughs> These are not pinpointed spots, but having this is um, this is kind of an East Amherst uh, near the um, there's the Cumbie there and there's the uh, Spirit House over here. Two places that are near and dear to my heart. Um, the <laughs> these these spots here, like I don't, you know, this is this is a question. Like it would take Alan, you may know offhand, but it would it. it, it if you don't, it would take you going by and saying, well, these are not public way. We could, there's no way we could do it. But this this spot here in particular is like, I feel like there's a, there are spaces for trees there, whether we could plant there or not, I don't know, but uh, it seems like an ample space. We and some of these others. Yeah. Bennett. Sorry. Sorry? We cannot see your mouse. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> that would be important. Anyway, the top, Basically, the the top red dot is one that is kind of a prime spot, I think, for that. And there are others like I just don't know what's you know like this is a place where a lot of like a lot of people enter town through this um, through this road um, on the way to work or coming back to school or whatever. East and, Amherst uh, Village Center. Yeah, there you go, East Amherst Village Center. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I I think I it, ideally we we would have enough open spots there to plant some trees i just the big question is public versus private so um anyway that's my submission and i will stop screen sharing now that's a it's a great idea um yep. and i look at that every day um, and i'm just been waiting and waiting for the development that's now scheduled to happen there so uh, three of those locations are now under uh they're going to be developed. Um, and they are, it is mostly setback plantings for uh, Belchtown Road. They're also going to be putting a sidewalk, a new sidewalk on both sides of Belchtown Road and doing some road widening. Wow. Um, all the way from um, uh, Cumberland's, Cumberland Farm down to the bridge. So it's, it's all going to get torn up and, and repaved and widened. Um, so probably Very not soon. a 2023 thing for us. Yeah, so it's going to be something yeah. we're going to need to come in after um, yeah. and do a lot of setback plantings. But I agree, it's it's you know it's a blighted area where everyone drives into town. You know. yeah. And 
these it, are desperate. It continues as you go up College Street. College Street has big gaps, especially by that, uh, yeah. you know, substation, utility substation. So yeah. I would love to see some stuff going in there. Yeah. That's also getting new sidewalks um, yeah. and some road work done. Okay. Right. Well, go ahead. Um, no, that's great. Uh, I just had one question. What about the Watson Farms uh, housing area? I'm not sure. Is that town owned or is that owned by a developer who we would need to get in touch with? What are the possibilities of planting there? Where's the Watson Farm? Uh, it's off Main Street. Um, oh, like go past Shumway and in uh, in between Main and Cod in College Street. So you're talking about Main Street or College Street? Is that the name of is that the name of the road, Watson Farms? Watson Farms is the name of the apartment complex. Oh. I'm not even I don't think I've ever heard that name, so I apologize. <laughs> it's Watson it's Farms. probably private property. Is it's it on Main Street, Julian, or is it on College Street? The entrance. The entrance is on Main. Okay. And it says it's owned by the Amherst Housing Authority. Oh, that's called, really? Wow. It's Al yeah. Isn't it Alpine something or? Yeah. 693 Main Street. Yeah, there's a, Amherst Housing Authority has a project there. Um, yes. That's not Aspen Chase, that's totally different. Yeah. That's different. Across from uh, Salem Place, kind of, I think. Right next to the bus stop. Yep. Uh, underneath power lines. Yeah. The high tension lines there. Um, yeah. So there is definitely is an opportunity there. You got to watch about. You got to watch the high tension lines. Can't print anything big. Um, uh, as far as going into the complex, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. Any other ideas? I um. I have Dana, uh, Blue Hills, and Faring Street again. Uh, Dana and Blue Hills are losing a lot of their sugar maples, uh, and I have to take more down, unfortunately. Um, and they would like trees. Um, Faring Street um, needs trees. There's going to be a lot of setback plantings there, but they need trees as well. So. Okay. I definitely had neighbors on Orchard who thought some of the trees on Woodside were going to go to Orchard and were sad when they didn't. Yeah. So they lost a bunch of sugar maples, but again, there's the question of, you know, is that a neighborhood where people could just plant their own trees? I don't know. So it is, Probably. it is a lot of those houses. Um, I mean, they're all Amherst college faculty, except for one, but many of them are rental rented. So. I'd like to replant on orchard. Um, you know, we just didn't have enough opportunity when we were planting to do it. Um, enough people and time, uh, resources. So I would like to add that in uh, for next year or something maybe my crew can do. Um, well, if we can get, you know, three of these, we've got five or six ideas here, three or four of them to work, and then we do tree care the other months, uh, that should be good. That would be a good season. So good. Anything else on the tree plantings? No, keep looking for spots and there's probably more spots we could uh, come up with too. So, um, all right. Uh, so next is the history museum. Um, yeah. So I cut their wood round of Mary Maple. So they're going to have one that's going to go into the history museum as oh, a nice. part of their, part of their displays. Um, I do need to reach out to them. Uh, I have been developing some ideas. I do have the, Specification written out to go out to bid to get the tree work done that needs to be done on the, the sycamore tree. Um, so I can I can roll that out probably in February um, or, or before um, to get those bids back. Um, but uh, yeah, I I need to reach out to them 
okay. to get the ball rolling. Is the um, the tree that's there, is that an American sycamore? Yes. Okay. So if we plant a bride tree, I think um, we shouldn't do interspecies marriage there. Um, we might want to get a, a pure American sycamore and it's away from the road. It should be, should be doable. Yeah, sycamore. I don't have a problem planting a, you know, a native yeah. sycamore. So Good. American sycamore. So, and uh, that, you know, we should, at some point, I guess when, whenever we plan at some event, maybe the planting of that tree could be part of that. Yeah. I hope, I hope, I hope it is. Good. Okay. Other ideas about that? Yeah. All right. Uh, town budget line item. Reaching out to the it's, town council. Yeah, I have it and I will. Okay. That's good. And uh, Julian already mentioned a little bit about, oh, no, that's the significant tree ordinance. Yeah. So, um, you know, people want to write, writing a letter to the editor, op -ed or a letter to the editor about this, about the significant tree ordinance, about any tree related issues. I think getting our names in the paper, you know, uh, so and so, member of the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee, or signed by all of us as the Public Shade Tree Committee. So, I haven't been writing at all, but um, I keep thinking about it. But if people want to write, uh, anyone on the committee should really do that. It's a good thing to do. I brought this up to the Amherst Climate Justice Alliance, which is a group in town, uh, and they said that they would push for it as well. So, great. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right, uh, old items, connection with Stockbridge School. Um, we talked about that last month. I forget what we said though. Um, I don't remember what we said. I think it's not the Stockbridge School that we need to connect with, but I right, had um, right. a message into Christina. Zanson. Yes, and um, you know they're very receptive to having us come speak in their classes and um, you know, I teach in the same classroom as, as these folks. And um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what the best pathway forward there is, but maybe if we are looking for volunteers for planting events or for specific projects, um, especially this spring, you know, that's an opportunity for us to reach out to Christina and her students. Okay. And I'd love to speak to the classes. So. Okay. Yeah, Henry, um I do have something to add to that. Um, so every spring I do a tree, I do a, an urban forestry tree walk with one of their classes. We meet on Kendrick Park in the afternoon and we walk from Kendrick Park. We talk about, you know, the various development that's happened there and the tree issues. And, and then we walk kind of down North Pleasant Street towards the common and we end up, you just go into the parking garage and talk about, you know, challenges over there. And then we end up on the common and we talk about you know, how the common gets a lot of soil compaction and um, things like that. And then the class ends. And so I've been doing that for too many years. Um, and this year um, we decided to break it up a bit. And I was, we were going to ask a member of the committee or members of the committee to join us on Kendrick Park yeah. and talk about the role of the committee in, um, you know, in Amherst and what you do as far as volunteer tree planting and public education and outreach um, and stuff like that. So um, the date, uh, the date is, uh, I wrote it down, the 5th of April. April 5th, okay. Yep. What time? Uh, it's usually in, I think it's usually around 11 o'clock or so, midday, it's midday usually, I think, 10, 11. Week. I have to get I have to get the time. Okay. Um, is it usually a weekday or a weekend? It's usually a weekday. Yeah, it's the, it's the class. So they have a class and they all they go out and uh, meet on Kendrick Park and during their you know hour long class or whatever it is or a lab um, we um, we discuss urban forestry. If I can get permission from my teacher at that time, I would certainly be up for it. Okay. Great, and I'm I'm happy to do that. Yeah, um, Britt, what's the name of the program we're actually trying to connect with instead of Stockbridge School? Um, it's let's see, it's the UMass Depot. 
Um, it's the forestry and arboriculture, boriculture uh, program. Yeah, you can so that's get within the Department of Environmental Conservation, which is separate from Stockbridge. That's both are within the College of Natural Sciences, but Stockbridge is its own school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, all right. Northampton Road. Anything new there? Nothing new on my end. Okay. Library trees. Um, I did tell Sarah about a meeting that was coming up of the library board. I was going to talk some about. Um, design. I don't know if she went, but we'll table that. Uh, website updates, Mr. Bennett. Sorry, no. Okay. Uh, complete oh. streets. I've done nothing I, on that. And I have an update on complete streets. Okay. So at our November, December board meeting of the tree wardens, um, the, the head architect landscape designer for Mass DOT, who is a, a large member, uh, joined us and said that um, they received a lot of questions and concerns over uh, their tree component of complete streets. And they are going to be sending out a survey to all communities to see how trees should play in complete streets, what the role of trees should play in complete streets. So, they get, which this means they get some pretty serious pushback over the years and they're looking at their tree, how they use trees in complete streets. So I think that's pretty big progress. And that was the goal of all of the outreach we were doing was to um, try to get them to take trees more seriously during yeah. uh, road projects. So I think that's great news. That is great. Okay. Um, yeah, let us know when the survey comes out or how we can get all of us to respond to it. Good. That is good. Um, all right. Uh, significant tree ordinance. Again, Sarah's not here. There's probably no particular news yet. Yeah, Sola... I, I haven't done anything on it. So. Okay. The Sola bylaw group, Julian. Are you there, Julian? I'll take that for a note. He's still on. The... Um, all right, uh, anything else? Committee comments? Topics not anticipated by the chair. We talked about that one, um, which is whether we can plant when people request trees. So I'll keep pursuing that. Um, there you are. Any news from the solar bylaw group? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and let me know if you can't hear me because I'm at a sports game. Um, but. Basically, I went to their meeting and they had uh, the fire department um, and they had two folks from the fire department there who talked all about uh, what, um, who talked all about what, uh, who talked about what to do with the battery storage systems and how that would affect like the potential for a forest fire or an explosion or something like that. Um, but they didn't really go into much with deforestation or anything like that. Thank you. All right, anything else? No? I just hope you guys have been able to hear me. I know it's very loud in my background, I apologize. <laughs> we heard that, I heard that. If I heard that, most people probably heard it, so that's good. Um, yeah, all right, so next month, I will make sure that the meeting gets posted on time. I send out the thing and it's always gone, so I didn't think about it, but I will double check back if I don't hear right away from Amber from the town about that. Um, that's probably, my email is a mess. Sometimes emails go out, sometimes they don't go out, sometimes they come in, sometimes they don't come in, sometimes they come in five days after I someone sent it to me. I usually get responses to people easy people's emails before I get the actual email. But um, anyway, um, all has to do with spam filters and everything. But that's just my my little rant. I'll stop now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, looking forward to when we can plant, huh? Yeah. Indeed.
All right, good. Uh, thanks again. And uh, yeah, Benny, you'll get the minutes out and everyone will do all the things they promised to do this month, right? Yep. Yes. The new right. year. <laughs> all right, new bye. Year. All right, thanks. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.